that year five is the best so far for Armando yeah. Bacon. And so he will jump center against the aforementioned Malik Brown, the sophomore from Culpeper, Virginia. And it's the Tar Heels with the basketball first and their freshman point guard, Elliot Cadeau. Here is R.J. Davis, ninth in the country at over 21 points per game. Inside they go, trying to establish Baycott over the left shoulder. No. Engram's been fantastic on the glass, especially in ACC play. Got a piece of that, and Carolina will keep it. Here's the problem for Syracuse in this game. They got beat 53-30 to 30 on the boards in the first matchup. They've got to hold their own when the ball's on the glass at both ends. And at this end of the floor, can Syracuse defend North Carolina. Three of Syracuse's last four opponents have shot 60% or better from the floor and a great start. Cormac Ryan has the first three against SU. Yeah, Ryan makes him pay for going two, three out of bounds under. Cormac Ryan, if he gets a 34, 35% three-point shooter in March, this is a final 14. Well, that shot puts him just over 30% on the year. Best shooter for Syracuse, Chris Bell has his first three. Chris Bell, a 40% three-point shooter, told me before the game, he doesn't look at a specific spot. He's not a front rim, back rim guy, just rises and sees. A really good field as a jump shooter, and here's the problem for Syracuse. This big dude on the inside, a one-man wrecking crew, getting his own miss. The 23-year-old grad student from Richmond looking to get his 80th career double-double here tonight. He gives Carolina a 5-3 lead. Like North Carolina has really grown since I saw him in Atlantis on the defensive end before. They got some chops about him. And Hubert Davis challenged him two or three games ago to keep that chops up. Just the fifth made three of the season for Malik Brown. And the Orange take the lead. Cadeau left his feet. It's a Syracuse steal. This is something Coach Davis said Carolina's got to stay away from against Syracuse specifically. Judah Mintz. And there's Brown to clean it up. 8-5, Cuse. Well, Syracuse is the best in the ACC at getting steals and creating turnovers. North Carolina's got to be tight with that ball. And just sloppy, careless habit passes so far by North Carolina. A couple of possessions. And Judah Mintz can go get one off anytime he wants. And the effort, the energy of Syracuse jumping off the court early. It's R.J. Davis, and he's called for the offensive foul caused by Judah Mintz's defense. And it's not easy to stay in front of R.J. Davis. He is a legit driver. He's got the step-back move. But a good job by Mintz, who, when he's dialed in, talking about three and white, one of the better defenders in this league. Mintz uses the screen by Brown. His pass deflects off the head of R.J. Davis and out of bounds. You don't see that every day. <laughs> you do not. <laughs> Does he get a deflection for that? <laughs> Most likely on film, yes. <laughs> well, keep your head in between the, the ball and your guy, right? And that's what R.J. Davis does. Try to reverse that ball right off the backside of four in Carolina blue. <laughs> Justin Taylor along to J.J. Starling, the sophomore. From nearby Baldwinsville, New York, uses the screen, works his way into the lane, dumps it off. Brown kicks to the left side. Shot clock down to three. Starling puts it up. There's that Carolina defense we expect to see a lot of tonight, Jimmy. Good job by Starling, though, to get behind the ball and run into that jump shot. The kid averaging about 19 points a game over the last eight. Harrison Ingram going to work into the lane. Draws the crowd back out front. Cormac Ryan. Terrific job knifing to the bucket and drawing the foul on Bell. I love the overall game of Cormac Ryan. And he's way more than just a jump shooter. He is physical. He's tough. He drives it. He fights his guts out on the defensive end. He'll get in there and scrap for three or four rebounds a game. And he is a real key if North Carolina is going to make a legit run of that final four. Big time stroke from the perimeter and has to find his groove. Uh, Cormac Ryan is one of three native New Yorkers in the starting lineup for Carolina. He grew up in Soho and attended the collegiate school on Manhattan's Upper East Side. Family moved to Chestnut Hill, Mass. Cormac played his last three years of varsity ball in Massachusetts at Milton Academy. But he has been a huge addition, now 25 years old, playing his final season, we think, of college basketball. <laughs> you know, the, the, the top 20 transfers in college ball this year 
are averaging about 15 points a game overall. The top 20 freshmen in college ball are only averaging eight. That's the value of older guys transferring in. Taylor couldn't handle the pass. It goes out of bounds. They say Ingram was the last to touch, so Syracuse will keep it underneath with 11 to shoot. Bell off the bounce. Usually see him spotting up around the three-point line. Yeah, no doubt because Ryan did a good job of chasing him off that three-point line. But, man, when you're 6'7", you can rise up and make guarded twos really well done by Bell. Baycott defended well, brings it back out to Cadell. The freshman puts it up off the glass. No, Baycott tips to himself, but it comes to Mintz. again. Yeah, why not, huh? He's got a couple tonight. Yeah, not a three-point volume shooter, but Malik Brown seen a really good rim early. Just 25% in conference play coming in. Sticks a trail three. But that is part of his progression. Yeah. One of this huge sophomore class for Syracuse. Ryan going to work on Bell. Good help by Taylor. Ryan just forcing his way into the lane. Missed the shot. Syracuse keeps Carolina to just one shot attempt. Yeah, I like the fight that I've seen out of Syracuse early in this game. Taylor's fouled and will head to the free throw line when we come back. Syracuse showing some fight against the numbers. The lease on the ball is much better than what a 25% shooter you would think has, but there's this trail three. I said in the open, if you got punked by 36 points a month ago, you come out tonight if you're a Syracuse and you fight with everything you have. And I think one in white probably sets the tone as well as anybody that Adrian Autry has. And as you mentioned, Carolina in that game a month ago down in Chapel Hill out-rebounded Syracuse 53-30. So far early, it's even 3-3 three -three yeah. in this game tonight. That's a big part of it. It's got to be gang rebounding by Syracuse the entire night. They are a small club. All five guys got to be involved on that box. At the line is Justin Taylor, the sophomore from Charlottesville, Virginia, averaging 5.4 rebounds a game. Now only 10 of 15 on the season from the free throw line. It's the second. Syracuse 14, Carolina 7. Well, as we mentioned off the top, going on the road anywhere in this country at any level, there are no guarantees. No, there's not. And Adrian Notri goes to his 2-3 zone after timeout to probably take away the scoring play that Hubert Davis possibly anticipated against man. Syracuse, only 13% of the time this year dug in that 2-3 zone. It's gone up a little bit the last couple of weeks. Brown goes back door to Bell, who gathers. Good defense by Cormac Ryan. The shot off the side of the backboard. Tracked down, of course, by Baycott. Seth Trimble back in the Carolina lineup after missing a couple of games. R.J. Davis still looking for his first points of the night. Ingram misfires from three. Bell with a rebound. A good job, though, by five jerseys being in that paint when the ball's on the glass. Mintz, run up. Count the basket and one. Doug, you got to square him up. You have got to square this kid up. He's good with his right. He's very good with his left. And he kind of lulls you to sleep with that lazy dribble up top, and he is so good at shooting shots off the wrong foot, sometimes the wrong hand. And leads the ACC at eight free throw attempts per game. Don't foul his tough looks. Chris Bell takes a seat. Adrian Autry talking to him. Not sure if there's a reason why Chris came out. They had multiple conversations during a long practice yesterday that both of us were at, Jimmy. What do you make of Chris Bell, he can go for 31 game. He can score 25 to rally against Colgate for a win, but then there are stretches where he just disappears. Yeah, when you say long, you mean three hours? Because <laughs> it, it, it went all of three, if not more. Now, this is entire sophomore team, Syracuse. No points on the year from their freshman class or seniors. A young team that's in a rugged ACC this year. Offensive foul on Quadier Copeland. And there is Bell, the sophomore from Concord, California. His head coach, Adrian Autry. 
And that's an amazing stat right there, that the sophomore clash is a heavy load. And Adrian, to me, is desperate to find a five-man, a legit five-man next year to blend in with these guys. It'll be juniors a year from now. We've got a high school All-American coming in. And it's all about bringing in dudes at this level. And the starting center to begin the year for Syracuse, Naheem McLeod, was your classic rim protector, but he is out with a season-ending injury, so they're without the 7-4 services of McLeod. Benny Williams was dismissed. He had size and athletic ability at 6-9. Peter Carey is out with uh, concussion protocol, so there is another big not available for Syracuse. Starling comfortable in the mid-range. Here's the problem for North Carolina. Syracuse has two guys that can go get their own. Starling and Mitz are both tall, physical guards, 6'3", 6'4", just bouncing North Carolina defenders out of the way early. And again, with the roster issues Syracuse has, you like, Jimmy, this zone defense? I, I, I do, and I think Adrian's going to start playing more and more as the season progresses. A man-to-man -man defense has just not had that sustained fight that you have to have. Claudier Copeland, tough shot. Able to make it go. A circus shot, and the Orange has made five of their last six from the floor. But another offensive possession by Syracuse, playing through the contact. Yards after contact in football, and yards after contact in basketball, very important. Well, Copeland is the most creative with the ball on this team. Ryan misses from the corner. And Syracuse continues, Jimmy, to hold on in the rebounds. Seven to four, Orange over the Tar Heel. That is a monster, monster number in this game. Mintz. And Lee Brown, after making a couple of threes, puts it on the deck, setting up Mintz, who missed five. Ryan's pass deflected, goes into Baycott. He just turns and scores. Well, Armando Baycott, if he catches it that deep, he's going to get 30 in this game. You've got to fight him in that meet and greet as he's running down the floor. If your first contact with Baycott is at the restricted arc, he's going to score. Darling attacks. Over Davis for two more. Just sizing him up. A little bit of a reload dribble by Starling and gets downhill. He continues to be more aggressive as his first season in Orange moves on. Kalen Withers, the Louisville transfer, brings it back out to R.J. Davis, who is still scoreless for Carolina. Baycott, again, inside, he's fouled on the shot. Doug has been a guard-oriented attack for Syracuse in this game. I know that our guy Brown made a couple early, but the physical guard play of Syracuse, two and white Starling, takes the bump and rises and fire. Copley comes right back, right through his smaller defender. Really good start for the Orange. Game where Syracuse just was non-competitive on the road, and this is the first year for Adrian Autry after taking over for Jim Beheim, and it, I got the sense out of that that he's finding his voice. Absolutely. I mean, this is a guy coaching at his alma mater, and he, you know, he won a Big East title when he was here at Syracuse, took them to three straight NCAA tournaments. There's extra pressure, but there's also extra pride when you're coaching at your alma mater. And this guy knows the expectations and the standard that Syracuse is trying to get back to. It's not just Syracuse in the ACC, but you look at those teams right now, Doug, Syracuse, Louisville, Notre Dame, you know, I throw NC State, Georgia Tech in there. They've got to rise back up and get the ACC back to being one of the top conferences in college ball. They've dropped off a little bit. And Syracuse and Adrian Autry, keep an eye on them because he knows exactly what this program is supposed to be. Well, Syracuse right now 15-9 overall, 6-7 and seven in league play. And again, he replaced Jim Beheim, Beheim, who retired after 47 years as head coach at his alma mater. And Autry continues to rebuild the roster and the program in his image. In his last game as a player at Syracuse, Sweet 16 lost to Mizzou. He scored 31 points in the second half after going scoreless in the first half. What an amazing one-half performance in that NCAA tournament. And that's a guy who is fifth all-time in Syracuse history in career assists, able to put 30-plus up in a half. Cormac Ryan. 
wide open, able to hit the three. It's 23-18 Orange. If Syracuse is going to try to trap the ball into the timeline, you've got to make them pay like Ryan did. He runs to that deep corner. Keep an eye on the number of times Carolina scores in the first six, seven seconds of the shot clock. Brown brings it back outside. Starling from the foul line, around and out. Pulled down by Baycott. And I can hear Baycott's voice, though. He's forcing weak, weak, weak. You're by yourself. What a great vocal leader at the back line of that defense. <laughs> Malik Brown has the stickiest hands on the Syracuse defense. Able to force another turnover. Yeah, he's number two in the ACC in steals. And you've got to defend Baycott early with a crowd. And Brown does a good job of just winning that top shoulder. Plays low where the ball was delivered. I didn't know how hard Syracuse would fight in this game, but they have answered it so far in the first 10 minutes. And they need some help to get it in. Rebounds have evened out now. Seven apiece. Carolina has grabbed the last three. Quadir Copeland with the basketball. Bell back in the game, watched by Cormac Ryan. Bell puts it up. And in. That is his spot. I know he can shoot from both corners, but the left corner is his sweet spot. Today's pass deflected by Brown out of bounds. Carolina will have it underneath. Chris Bell with eight points to lead Syracuse. When he scores, the Orange have been far more successful this season. Well, those guards are pretty tight up top, discouraging that nail, that nail pass. Off the Ryan miss, here is Mintz. He's got two points so far. Has the fourth leading score in the conference. Oh, working on Wiggles. Gets it in the air, lays it off the glass for two. Doug, once again, those guards for Syracuse are just back dribbling and reloading the attack. They go right at North Carolina. Ryan answers going right at Syracuse at the other end. That's that's the fear against North Carolina. They rip that thing out of the net and rush it up the floor. Very disciplined where they run and how fast they run. Copeland turns down the shot and draws the foul on Withers. I talked about Chris Bell from that left corner. As a right-handed shooter, you can get really deep and still have vision of that rim. And typically, you'll see right-handed shooters favor that left side because they can get as deep in that corner as they want and not get buried behind the backboard with that right release. I, this kid shoots it as well as anyone I've seen in college ball this year. 40% right on the year coming in and conference play. Very smooth, silk release. Yeah, six nights ago in this building, he put 30 on Louisville, went 8 of yeah. 10. And to top it off, he had the game securing chase down block late in regulation. Ryan lost the dribble. Dangerous pass. Mintz gets it. Here's Bell. Gives it up. Starling. He drives. And goes to the other side and puts it in. They are just bulldogs to the rim right now, these Syracuse guards. Well, we said off the top, top 10 teams are losing on the road to unranked opponents at a record rate. Carolina back within eight, but what looked like could have been a runaway from the start has been anything but, Jimmy. And A.D. not Autry Doug doing a really good job of letting his team run when it's available and slowing them down when it's not. Mix. Back out to Starling. Tend to shoot. Starling drives as it poked away by Davis. The officials look at each other, and it'll go the other way when we come back. I talked about these Syracuse guards being bulldogs right now. They're, they're just a blow by, a bad closeout, physical at the rim, winning their collisions. 
the Orange hanging in this thing and beyond with the lead. There's a game update here. What are you seeing from number four Marquette on the road? They're playing downhill and attacking the basket. And the last time these two teams played, a Butler win. They were 5 for 31 from the three. Today, they're attacking the paint. Meanwhile, number 21, Virginia playing their best ball, going for their ninth straight win. Yeah, Reese Bigman hard to keep out of lane. It starts on the defensive end and the tempo for Virginia. Slowly but surely, the bowl constrictor sucks the air out of you. Hit up by five. Highlights coming your way at the break, Doug and Jimmy. Kevin, thank you so much. And as we've been talking, a theme throughout the season, Jimmy Dykes, AP Top 10 teams, after Kansas went and got thumped last night in Lubbock, now are sporting a losing record when playing unranked opponents. Really hard to imagine. Yeah, I mean, it'd be the worst record in the AP poll era. And uh, you got the, another one in the makings right now. And the reason is Syracuse even on the boards and the paint points are 12 to 12. Godfrey goes man to man now out of this ATO, just changing it up a little bit. Trying to keep Carolina out of a rhythm. Cadeau, Ryan, Ingram. Washington and Davis to five on the floor. Foul against Quadier Copeland. Coming up next at 9 Eastern, we'll take you to Rupp Arena for Antonio Reeves and number 22 Kentucky hosting Ole Miss. Carl Rapids, Jay Billis, Marty Smith. On the call, what do you make of the Wildcats at this point? Well, as Kentucky's lost three games in a row in Rupp for the first time in the history of that building. And if they were losing another one tonight, the sky's going to fall. Ole Miss, Doug, a very good team right now. They're one of the last four in, one of the nine teams being projected out of the SEC. And that's a big-time opportunity for Chris Beard tonight on the road in Rupp. Carolina, Jalen Washington was left wide open. He is now 6 of 12 on three-pointers this season. Mintz gets into the lane and shoots over Cadeau for two more. There's just a lot of individual win-year battle right now, offense by Syracuse, and that they are. Washington now inside, kicks it out. Cadeau, tough shot. Foul called against Syracuse. But don't foul his tough shots. Cadeau takes a ton of tough shots. I love his game, but you can't bail him out on those tough twos. I mean, just completely uncovered. Got lost on baseline out of bounds under defense. And Judah just, he's so crafty. He's all of 6'4", but he's shifty. Plays low to high, high to low, right to left. One-on-one -on -one matchups so far have been won by the team in white. Elliot Cadeau turned 19 in September, one of the few freshmen starting for a top 10 team in the country. How has he been able to immerse himself with guys who are 21, 22, 23, even 25 years old? Nah, no doubt. It, well, first of all, he's extremely talented. He sees the game one pass ahead at an extraordinary level. He's not a shooter yet. He's doing a couple on Saturday against Miami from the three-point line, but he is a downhill driving dude. That's easy. Yeah, that's, that's very easy money, man, for this kid. You're going to play a zone, man, whatever. You've got to know where four in, in Carolina Blue is. He is money. First three points of the night for the senior from downstate, White Plains, New York. Comes in averaging an ACC best 21 and a half points per game, top 10 nationally. Tough shot by Copeland. Ingram dribbles up for Carolina. He has had a quiet first half for the Tar Heels, but how versatile. A weapon is he missing on the turnaround. I like Syracuse defensively getting their defense set. Very few first six or seven second opportunities for North Carolina so far. The illegal screen against Brown, and that is his second. That's another one of the storylines for Syracuse. Can't afford to have him get into foul trouble. Now, and Adrian Opry is going to go to Munir Hima, who doesn't have a lot of experience. That moving screen, you try to roll a guy up right in front of the officials, is going to get called. And now this kid, 55 in white, has a ton on his plate. Very few minutes in ACC play, but because of his size, he's going to have to bang now for the next five minutes and 25 seconds of this first half. If I'm Carolina, I go right to Armando Baycott on this possession. Well, he backed up Jesse Edwards last year in 27 games, but this year Muni Hima has not played much at all, and Carolina does just that. To my point, he's just not, he's just not ready. He said... He's got a good body, but his feel for the game and defensively just not a guy right now that I think is built for this level of play. And North Carolina sees the same thing that I just said. The, the, the Baycott seal 
has gotten so much better this year. He will walk you up, but his ability to seal you off and hold you at Carolina now on a 6-0 run. It's Doug Sherman back inside the JMA Dome in Syracuse where Carolina has scored six in a row. And how have they been making their buckets now five of their last six, Jimmy? Well, the, the, the ball movement for North Carolina is good. And Baycott is such an anchor, man. He is a pressure release on that offensive end. When things aren't going well, you just trust this guy to seal and play low and get himself in position to score around the rim. One of my favorite guys to visit with in the Bahamas this year. And actually had a Mondo Burger in Chapel Hill. I was there for the SEC ACC Challenge. Any Phenomenal. Good? Nice. Phenomenal. Nice. Well, every time Armando Baycott takes the floor, history is made. I mean, his name is all over the Carolina record books. No basket. They say the foul came before the shot by Judah Mintz. And that the was, personal goes against Baycott. Is that not awfully close to being in the shot? The shot motion by Mintz? Where, where does the contact occur? As he's starting up, uh, that, like, maybe that second, as he put the right foot down, is probably why they called it off. But boy, so close. Sixth team foul on Carolina, so non shooting. Syracuse keeps with under five minutes to go in the half. What was once a 10 point game is back down to one. So RJ Davis picks up his second foul, and that's the seventh that will send Mintz to the line, which he does an awful lot of. Nobody in the ACC gets to the line or makes more free throws than number three in white. Eight free throw attempts a game, five assists a game, and he's offensively very difficult to stay in front of. Not a trustworthy three-point shooter. He's got a lot of twist in his upper body, even on his free throws right here, Doug. Watch how much his left shoulder rotates back, and just most consistent shooters stay a little more squared up than Judah Mintz does. Making 75% from the line this year. He gets a pair. The orange lead is back to three. And we're going to stay in that 2-3 zone, which helps stay in front of Cadeau and R.J. Davis. Good ball movement to find Ingram for the three. A phenomenal job of Hubert Davis to put his point guard inside that zone at the nail. First time he's ran a guy in there and he puts his point guard in there. Cadeau, who again, he sees the play one pass ahead of everybody else in the building. Ingram, a 42% shooter on the year. Bell, unable to answer at the other end, pulled down by Ingram. Carolina with a chance to take the lead. Ingram for three. Tar Heels in front. He is a blue blazer, very versatile. Can do a little bit of everything for you. Good, quick ball reversal in the conversion offense by the Heels. And Jimmy, he is now 10 away from 1,000 career points. A couple of years at Stanford before transferring to Carolina this year. Turnaround bucket by Taylor. His first shot made tonight. Steal by Mintz. Again, Adrian Autry slowing his guys down. He does not want to be in a horse race for 40 minutes against North Carolina. Taylor hands it off to Starling with Davis stepping out to defend. Hema sets the screen. Taylor penetrates. Little step back, but call for traveling. No basket. Well, Harrison Ingram does a little bit of everything. He's averaging 11 and 11 in conference play. This guy's a walking double-double. This is what I'm talking about. You put your point guard inside that zone, and Ingram just sitting there looking for that backside bomb. The very next possession, reverse it, swing, swing, 55, rise, release, rotation, result. It doesn't matter the size of the guy you put inside that zone. You find a way to get your best passer on the interior over, and Cadeau is that. And Hubert Davis can coach with any of them out there. You know, I look at this ACC right now, four teams in. Wake Forest, I believe, is one of the first four out. But North Carolina, now they're fighting for a one seed right now in that NCAA tournament. Purdue and UConn, they're not going to move off that one line. But Arizona, Houston, North Carolina, Tennessee, I think those four teams, Doug, are fighting for the final two spots as a one seed in that NCAA tournament. To your point, North Carolina can't lose this game tonight. There's pressure in that as well. Well, this is a quad two game for Carolina on the road against Syracuse. 
And if not for that three game stretch where they had losses at Georgia Tech and then the home loss against Clemson surrounding the big win against Duke, Carolina would be on that wood line. Absolutely. Here's Davis, who's had a quiet night so far, scoring just three points for the ACC leader in points per game. Five on the shot clock. Into the middle, out to Ryan. He's got his third triple of the night. Carolina up by four. That's pretty good offense because they're not just having Cadeau play in there the entire possession. He's picking and choosing when he flashes. Man, when he does, again, just quickly finding that backside bomb by Cormac Ryan. He is a competitor three in Carolina Blue. He fights it now. Tough shot. Judah Mintz gets the roll. But you didn't foul his tough shot if you're North Carolina. You can live with it. Can't live with this. Ingram gets to the corner. Davis gets a look. Offensive rebound. Washington puts it up and in. Just powered right through. Did he not? The arms of Hema. Washington, that backup five guy behind Baycott, getting a little more rugged as the season progresses. And after missing a year of high school ball with an ACL tear, never really was fully himself last year, continues to emerge as a sophomore. Starting again for the mid range. Those are tough shots because there's no reason to be concerned about Hema as a ball screener, so you're making that shot over your primary defender and that secondary defender. Look at Cadeau sitting there in that nail, just very sneaky trying to find a gap. Davis drives up and over Hema now. Well, trying to push the tempo, cut off by Davis, and the Orange will bring it back out. Red Autry, the head coach, says to Judah Mintz, slow it down and set it up. Syracuse got blasted, blasted by 36 points a month ago at Chapel Hill. Why they play the game? Absolutely, you just never know. Starlin from the left side still has the touch. He's got 10 points. I, I just feel like the Syracuse guards feel like they can go get theirs anytime they want. Here's Cadeau from the nail out to Ingram. Time to shoot. Taylor knocked it away. Syracuse can retake the lead. Take the last one, right? I mean, take the very last one of this half if you're Syracuse. You're not a great offensive rebounding team. Ideally, you could take it with maybe three seconds. It's going to be a guard, though, Doug, making a play. That's been their best offense this half. Starling has Davis to beat. Hema sets the screen. Now five of the shot clock. On the switch, Starlin through the legs on the pull-up. And we got more out of the first 20 minutes than perhaps we anticipated, Jimmy. A really good last possession, though, by Syracuse. You took it at the perfect time. You trusted your guard to make another play. I question the fight that Syracuse would have in this game coming in. I don't question it now. What a performance by the home team. Carolina. And Syracuse tied at the dome. We send it back to the studio. Kevin Nagandi heats up. He's a difference maker. Those 13 points, the most he has had in a half this year in a Carolina uniform. No doubt. He's a big, tall, physical, competitive guard that you have to have if you're going to be really, really good in March. And I think North Carolina is built to do it. Are they built to get out of here tonight with a win? is the present question. Well, the, perhaps the best news for Carolina is that R.J. Davis has only three points, and yet the game is tied as Bell misses the three. And the rebounding has been relatively even. Syracuse has actually outscored Carolina in paint points. Davis misses on the runner. Baycott misses on the putback. Syracuse comes down with it. Mintz, Taylor, Bell, Brown, Starlin, same starting five for Syracuse in the second. Mintz picked up his dribble, gets it back out to Starlin. Cadeau, Davis, Baycott, Ryan, and Ingram, same starting five for the Tahir. <laughs> Bell for three. What a pass by Malik Brown to roll out of this short roll passer and find that six, seven stroke on the backside from Bell. Bell's got 11 to lead Syracuse. Starling has 10. Mintz with nine. 
Pretty big zone up top. Starling and Mintz both at 6-4. Doing a good job of showing arms. And in the middle, Cadeau calls his own number, then taps it back out to Ryan. His pass right into the hands of Mintz. Third in the ACC in steals per game. Comes up with another theft. Mintz, shovel pass, Brown, Taylor, extra pass, Starling for three. A really good decision by Mintz, not to force a tough one at the rim and keep the ball alive. On the night, Syracuse collectively six of 11 from distance. Cadeau turned it down to Davis for three. Off the back iron. Jimmy, are you a believer of the importance of the first two or three minutes of each half and the last two or three minutes of each half? Uh, no, no doubt. That was middle four minutes. Ooh, ooh. Shell oh, got him in the face. And down is Elliot Cadeau holding his face. Well, Bill gambles back to try to get the steal and Sticks that left hand mm. right in the right eye of Cadeau. Pretty tough shot. Here's Hubert Davis, who played a couple of games in this building as a junior at North Carolina. A couple of NCAA tournament wins back in 91. When we asked him before the game what he remembered, he thought for a second and said, Jimmy, well, we, we won. won both games. We won both games. Let's he did pretty well, 16 points and a blowout win over Northeastern, and then he scored 18 against a good Carolina team in a game that was more competitive. Cadeau continues to try and gather himself, and he'll be replaced by Seth Trimble, who is just back after missing a couple of games with what they call an upper body injury. Boy, this is a tough few minutes now without Cadeau on the floor, because he's been the facilitator against this zone better than anybody else. Wonder who they'll put in the middle at the uh, nail. Now they're going to go with Ingram on this possession. Trimble could get in there and make a play as well, I think. Davis bounces it out of bounds. Syracuse the last to touch. The Carolina Keats with 10 on the timer. I think Syracuse will stay in this zone with a short clock, 10 to work with. You certainly have to tag four in Carolina Blue on the back side of the floor. Six to shoot. Davis, a long three-point shot misses. Second opportunity, and we've got a foul on the rebound that's going to go against Judah Mintz. What a college basketball Saturday we have for you on ESPN. We've got number nine, Duke, and Florida State, and then it's number six, Kansas, against 25th-ranked Oklahoma, and finally, number 22, Kentucky, and 13th-ranked Auburn square off in a sonic blockbuster. Should be another great afternoon of hoops. Now, good luck to Kentucky trying to win in the jungle. Have, have you done a game at Auburn in the last few years? I have not. It is at a level matching right there with the Cameron Crazies. That student section is as good as we have in all of college ball. Bruce Pearl, he doesn't have the best starting five, but I think he has the best starting 11. That's how deep his bench is. That foul was on Judah Mintz, just his first, as Seth Trimble makes the second. Five-point Syracuse lead. We were tied at halftime at 42. Throws the defense by faking that pass to that corner. 11 points now for the ACC's fourth leading score. Mintz averaging over 18 per night. And you can see why he gets there eight times a game to the free throw line. Three and white. He is just slick. Washington passes it out. Shot clock down to three. Tough shot for Trimble. Washington got a hand on it, but it comes to Starling. And Syracuse continues to gain the rebound in this game. Very, very important. Mintz got a whistle. 
And he will head back to the line. Jimmy, he's just wired to get fouls called. Yeah, he is, but you got to have discipline. Don't foul his tough shots. And that ball movement by Syracuse. Starling averaging 19 over the last eight, playing really well. And Judah Mintz, watch right here. The ball fake, the shot fake, frees himself up. Got a good one in Syracuse. Just makes you wonder, what if for Syracuse had Jim Brown played his senior year? Phenomenal person, phenomenal man. And an All-American at Syracuse in football, track and field, lacrosse. He was initially a walk-on on this campus and overcame a ton of discrimination at multiple levels. Some would say the greatest football player in the history of the NFL. Rushed for over 12,000 yards, averaged five yards per carry. Man, what a stud was he. And others would say he's the greatest lacrosse player of all yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't realize until today he was also a captain in the U.S. Army Reserve. Just so well-rounded. For Mac Ryan, Carolina's been getting good looks from that corner. A rare miss for Ryan tonight. North Carolina has started the second half now 0 for 8 from the floor. Elliot Cadeau back out there defending Mintz. He's got a cut on the bridge of his nose after taking that inadvertent shot from Chris Bell a few minutes ago. Pass too tall for Brown. Davis comes away with it. By the way, he's got three personal fouls, and he is fouled by Judah Mintz. Talking about football, that was pretty good collision in what is the west end zone in this building when the football teams play. Watch Davis bring this thing. That's a little right. That's a... That's a free safety coming up and taking on a little scat back in the open field. Well, what do you make of the quiet night scoring the basketball so far for R.J. Davis as Cadeau leaves it short? I think the length of the zone has bothered R.J. a little bit. But R.J.'s a kid that doesn't always force things. and He made a big statement to me against Duke early this year because Duke... They trapped him. They put their body on him. You look up at 38 minutes. He's got 17 points, five assists, and no turnovers. And he's always a threat to go on an 8-9-0 run all by himself. Well, you know he's not thinking about the fact that he has scored 15 or more points in 10 straight games, the longest for Atari since Justin Jackson had a 13-game streak seven years ago. And right on cue, Davis with his second made three of the night. Well, to my point, you better be there on the catch, whether it's man or zone. Jay Starling tied up by Ingram. It's a held ball, possession Carolina. And the versatility of Ingram defensively is so impressive to tie up a ball out of a live drive. Watch Davis right there. And you're hesitant, your hands are down, and Davis sees it. That little rhythm dribble to his right. He's also good with it to his left. You have got to be there on the catch. Baycott sets the screen. Cadeau to the corner. Ryan turns it down. Dribbles into the lane. Tough shot. Off the window. No long rebound. Mintz and Syracuse has numbers. Bell to the left. He gets the line. Trent made the shot. And Brown comes down with the basketball. And we're going to have a foul call. Look, that is a ton of contact on an airborne player with Bell. And watch Bell get up. Trying to complete this lob and a ton of contact from behind that goes uncalled, and you've got to protect those airborne players. Maybe not you asking the same thing because Ryan comes in from behind. When you body some from behind like that, an airborne player, safety becomes an issue. I'm surprised no foul called. Yeah, none at all. So it's Syracuse basketball underneath the shot clock at 20. Bell, catch and release. Tough shot. Claudia Copeland into the game with the offensive rebound. Syracuse not winning the rebound battle, but they're not being blown out as well. Guards doing a good job of rebounding the elbows on the defensive end has helped. Five to shoot, Starling Boyce. Ingram tracks down the rebound for Carolina. 
Seventh ranked team in the country, down by six on the road. Cadeau. Yes, a huge three for UNC. Shot with confidence, did he not? I mean, he really snapped it off. He made his first two threes of conference play on Saturday. Hubert Davis told him before the ball game, we trust his three-point shot. It's the good ones that he's got to take. Carolina with six unanswered points. Good high low by Brown, defended by Ryan. That's an easy two for the sophomore from Virginia. Yeah, way too easy to give up a mismatch by North Carolina with Cormac on Malik Brown. Syracuse has four in double figures. And the lead is back to five. Ryan to the free throw line. Cadeau. Davis bottled up. Gets away from the double team. Tough pass to Baycock. And he'll head to the line for two. The mismatch inside. Syracuse does a good job of recognizing that Malik Brown's got it. And there's no pressure on the ball. Baycott is backed off. And that's just an easy pass to make over the top. And Cadeau with a ball fake frees himself up. There's nothing wrong at all with his release. No. That's, that's a kid that's just going to get better and better growing into a shooter at that point guard spot. And now the third leading scorer in the history of North Carolina basketball, Armando Baycott, who most recently passed the big smooth, Sam Perkins. He now trails only Phil Ford, who he might catch this year, probably will, but almost certainly won't catch Tyler Hansbro, whose 2,872 points should stand the test of time. That's uh, what I appreciate, appreciate about Bakoff this year. He's averaging 31 minutes in conference play. He's in very good condition. He stays out of foul trouble. He's a battler on both backboards. On the switch, Mintz attacks Bakoff and scores over him. Again, just get that quick mismatch and attack. This is a quad two game for North Carolina. A win would not, according to Joe Lenardi, move them back to the one line, but a loss certainly could be damaging. A defensive pass. Baycott found by Cadeau, and he throws it down. How good is Cadeau inside that zone? Playing with his back to the basket as a point guard and knows exactly the feel of where Baycott's going to be. Beautiful. Eight minutes gone here in the second. Syracuse with the basketball up by three. Mintz tries to escape the double team and the blocking foul goes against Elliott Cadeau. Doug, watch Cadeau right here. He continues to play inside that zone. He catches it with his back to the basket and knows exactly where Baycott is. The ball fake to the outside, knowing the entire time he's going baseline. Big time play by Elliott Cadeau inside the zone. Doug, I thought this was really interesting in pregame. J.J. Starling with 13 points in this ballgame for Syracuse. First guy I've ever seen go through the first 45 minutes without shoes on. He went through the entire stretching and actually did some over and back runs without his shoes on. So I asked him, like, why are you out here in your socks? He said, I started it this year. I just want to get my whole body a feel for the wood. And I'm big into meditation right now. I just want my body to really get engaged with the floor and the surroundings. And very unique. I've never seen that out of a basketball player just to go that long. He has a good 45 minutes before he finished off the last 30 with his game shoes on, but it's working for him. Playing a really good game, 6 out of 10 from the floor. Meanwhile, coming out of that last time out here, it was clear that something is up with Armando Bacot, one of his legs. Shoot a mince. Give him 17 points. Cadeau in the middle of that zone. He's got it. Cross court. Cormac Ryan, great shot fake. Wide open from 17 feet. He's got two more. But Doug, you will take that if you're Syracuse. And you made North Carolina work that ball and get to the third side of the floor and take a tough two by Cormac Ryan. Those are his first two points of the second half after scoring 13 before the break. Carolina trying to again get the ball out of Mintz's hands. They do that. Copeland, Bell, 4-3. Ingram with a rebound. Get 
Ryan's pass anticipated nicely by Malik Brown who swaps it out of bounds. Cadeau cannot get stationary inside that zone. He's got to move and flash and give different looks, find angles. If he's stagnant, it makes it very difficult for two and blue to get a touch. Ryan, a little strong that time. Starling with a defensive rebound. And the Orange will walk it up. 10-20 to go in regulation. Adrian Autry doing a good job of playing all gas at some times and, and a lot of brakes applied at some times in this game, really controlling the speed he wants to play with. Bad pass by Malik Brown right into the hands of Ingram. Cadeau, bounce pass. Hey. Davis to the basket. Going to count it. And he will head to the free throw line. Big sequence for Carolina. Doug, how about the pass by Cadeau? I mean, I think he's the only one in the dome that saw enough of an angle to thread that ball through. Uh, Carolina comes up with a steal. They do play all game. Right here, there's just hardly anything there. But it's not just his sight. It's his feel for the game in the open floor that is at a next level for a freshman point guard. Are you going to check it? That is the second personal foul on J.J. Starling and the officials overtaking a look at the replay. And it looks like it's all just going to be a common foul. And so Davis to the line with a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. This kid takes no plays off. I've gone back and I've been here since Sunday, so I've, I've done everything you can do in Syracuse. You're a Central New Yorker now. Without a coat on, by the way. I didn't bring a coat oh, to Syracuse. You are such a Southerner. Yeah, Come on. Dinosaur barbecue, but you go back and watch the last three games in North Carolina. He does not take a playoff. That motor runs hot for 40 minutes every time he steps on the floor. Davis now with nine points. He has drawn Carolina even. Starling trying to get to that right hand. Mm. They worked on that considerably during practice yesterday. No, no doubt. Yeah, that's called go action. You catch that thing on the go, and the action is all downhill. Copeland had it knocked away. Syracuse has it with numbers. Copeland, bam. Orange by four. This place used to average 29,000 when Adrian Opry played here. It's not that number tonight, but it's starting to roar. Davis. He's eaten up. Now into double figures. He will not go away. And he shoots that ball quick, and he shoots it with guts. One month ago in Chapel Hill at the Smith Center, North Carolina blew out Syracuse. By 36 points, the worst drubbing Syracuse has endured in nearly 20 years. A month later, we've got a competitive ball game. Syracuse by one. Baycock spins away from Brown. Missed it, and Brown tracks down the long rebound. Baycott has not used his size in this game like he needs to. He's the most physical, forceful guy on the floor. And Jimmy, rebounds continue to be even. Carolina 21, Syracuse 19. And it was 53 to 30 in Chapel Hill in favor of North Carolina. Oakland banks it in. Doug, time and time again, it's a different guard for Syracuse just winning their one-on-one -on -one battle, making 12-foot shots in this game. Eight minutes left in regulation. Cadeau turns, drops it off. Baker, nice set for Carolina. What a pass by Cadeau again. He's your point guard at six foot inside that zone, playing through traffic to touch the field, delivered to perfection. Feels like a big 739 for North Carolina. This would be a damaging loss to their chase of a number one seed in that NCAA tournament. Baker now 14 points, six rebounds. Mintz turned down the shot. Copeland fakes the pass, missed it. Numbers for Carolina if they hurry. Davis with a head of steam. Protects the ball and gets right to the goal. Great description by you, the, the protect the ball part. He is so good and so clever and tough as nails. He just drove that ball with force through contact. Playing like an All-American has not been a better guard in the country from November till now than R.J. Davis. 
Doug, watch this drive by Davis right there. Covers it up. Shift sides the ball from the right to the left with a hard finish. And there. As part of their 103-67 route a month ago down at the Dean Dome, Carolina held Syracuse in the first half, Jimmy, to 29% shooting. So far here tonight, Syracuse is shooting 62%. How can that be possible? Well, the, the, the rise up and fight back of Syracuse, very impressive in this game. And Doug, think about this. Syracuse has not been ranked since 2018. That is mm. amazing. Yep. 2018, the last time this program was ranked. They haven't had a player drafted in the NBA draft since 2019. So Adrian Autry in his first year trying to put the fight back into Syracuse basketball and a massive opportunity right now with 7.08 to go to make a statement. Well, Jimmy, coming up next at 9 o'clock Eastern, we'll take you to Rupp Arena, number 22, Kentucky, hosting Ole Miss. Chris Beard texted me at halftime. He said the ice cream at Rupp is overrated. Really? Yes. Yeah, and I, I kind of agree with him a little bit. Okay. It's good, but I'm not so it's so much hype about it. You know, the next time you're in Lexington, you're going to have to answer for the question. I probably will. Made, <laughs> as will Coach Pearl. J.J. Stone oh, banks it in to beat the buzzer. A huge smile as he goes back and covers his face almost in shame. Doug, you got to have some of those, though, if you're trying to knock off the number seven team in the country that beat you by 36 a month ago. Top ten teams have lost more than they have won on the road this season against unranked opponents. Carolina in trouble here tonight in Syracuse. Ingram missed the layup. Baker tries to save it, but it goes to Ingram when he was out of bounds. It's Syracuse ball. Well, he goes the 45 minutes before the game without shoes on to get a feel for the floor and a feel for the surroundings. Pretty good feel by Starling <laughs> in late clock to rise up and have the awareness. I got to somehow snap this thing off. Five, four, three, two, one. Starling says, that's my bank. Man, huge hanging in a fist fight, right? Indy, the win streak for number four Marquette is at eight after beating Butler. Tyler, collect the story. Yeah, come behind. You can't go underneath that screen. He had 27 this game, five assists. Their next game is against number one UConn. Can't wait. XL. ACC Network pit offense not backing down in Virginia. Yeah, yeah Blake Hanson, he's got 27 this game, five made threes. He made nine against West Virginia. Cavs 23 game home sh home winning streak is in danger. Back to Doug and Jimmy. Guys, Blake Henson doing work for the Panthers, trying to take down the Hoos over on the ACC network. Meanwhile, we've got a potential upset brewing here with Syracuse on top of Carolina by two with just over six to play with Jimmy Dykes on Doug Sherman. Doug Clemson came in there Saturday and got 48 points in the paint against Syracuse. And Carolina tonight, half of that, only 24. That Syracuse zone has been very... Oh, the blow by Judah Mintz. He has a gear now that he kind of jumped out a little bit yesterday in practice. And that is on full display right now with 5.30 to go in this game. Seth Trimble back into the game with the basketball for the Tar Heels. Davis calls his own number from the wing. No, Ingram on the offensive glass. Bottled up. Goes up and over Brown for two. A grown man's rebound. Harrison Ingram. Doug, how tough it is to rebound the ball behind the backboard and to carve out space and twist your body like he did to get it up on the glass. Man, that was beautiful. Well, he's every bit of 6'7", 225, yeah. Jimmy. He is a load. And he is leading everybody in ACC play at over 10 rebounds per game. It's quite a one-two combo with him and Baycock. Mint. Fantastic pull. -up. Time and time and time again, those Syracuse guards knocking off contact and elevating that jump shot around the elbow. And here comes the dome again. Brown with yet another deflection. Carolina will keep. You saw the 21 points by Mintz. They've been efficient. Look at Mintz with the blow by. And you get that second defender, Baycott, now chasing from behind. That's, that's a win every time for Syracuse. Here's what I'm talking about. Knock off the contact and pull up with confidence. 
One of the great venues in college basketball starting to impact this game just a little, right? No doubt about it. They were expecting the largest crowd of the season so far. They had sold over 23,000 tickets as of yesterday. It'll stay with Carolina with 11 on the shot clock. said that for your benefit, by the way. It was coming. <laughs> Just in case. I, I've been ran over before sitting here. Who's gotten you? Several years ago, Levi ran off for Alabama. Uh, knocked me smooth on my back. Head, <laughs> headset went flying. Came up. Though, wasn't sure where I was for about two days. Cadeau <laughs> pulls it back out to Cormac Ryan. Davis with a step on Bell. Ingram for three. Great box out by Quadier Copeland. And no doubt, he's undersized, and he, he established position and backed up when the ball was in flight. And Adrian's been so good at controlling the pace of this game. Look at him up top right now, knowing exactly what he wants, where he is at the end of four-minute mark. Ball screen, get downhill. It's been good to him. Brown sets the ball screen. Now Mintz trying to go to work. Cadeau stays with him. Top shot. What? And he earns another trip to the free throw line. <laughs> He's so sneaky at back dribbling, reloading, and coming at you 100 miles an hour into a fallible jump shot. Stay tuned. Syracuse trying to pull off the upset. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Bundle home and auto and save. Visit Progressive.com. Over on ESPN2, we've got a top 25 showdown in the Big 12, Jacoby Walter. we got Oklahoma and Baylor at Waco. Should be a great matchup. Back to a good one at the Carrier Dome. Doug and Jimmy take it away. Kevin, thank you. Well, the Tar Heels highlight in ACC Network triple header Saturday as they host Virginia Tech at 2 Eastern, followed by Miami Boston College and then Louisville Pitt to cap off the night. With Jimmy Dykes, I'm Doug Sherman, back inside the JMA Wireless Dome, where Syracuse is giving seventh-ranked Carolina all it can handle in a game that is a rematch from a month ago when the Tar Heels tar and feather the orange. And the last time, if you're wondering, Syracuse took down a top-10 team. You have to go back to 2019 when they beat Duke. Zion had 35 points in a losing effort. The last time Syracuse beat any ranked team was... Just last February, almost uh, to the day a year ago, taking down North Carolina State when the Wolfpack was ranked 23rd. Well, what a performance tonight by Judah Mintz and J.J. Starling. Neither one has come out of the game. Mintz now with 23 points, Starling with 18. Adrian Autry playing offense like the lane is on fire, clearing people out of there, letting his guards go to work. quiet the crowd and does. Yeah, missed his last one from the elbow shot. But shot it with confidence that time. That zone has been really good for Syracuse in this game. They have taken away that drive ability, the downhill ball in the glass, offensive rebounds, all that stuff the Syracuse zone has deleted. Space against Cormac Ryan. Back to Starling with three on the timer. Back that one in. It's a perfect switch. I'm going to start doing games without my shoes on. <laughs> it worked really well for this guy. Warm up your, in your socks and let the game begin. J.J. Starling, transfer from Notre Dame. And does he step on that line or does he pull it back? That's a three. Unless something happens. As he rises that ball up, no, that's a three. Looked a little awkward with the left foot in front of the right. And a big-time shot by J.J. Starling. And he was a big-time shooter in high school at Baldwinsville and then transferring to prep school. But his freshman year, 
at Notre Dame. He suffered a shoulder injury, and yep. his shooting went down. It took him a while, reworked the shot of the offseason, and has, has continued to work on it. Well, from January till now, he's been Syracuse's best player. He's got his swag back, as Adrian Autry told us yesterday. Adrian Autry yesterday said, you know, I, when I finished playing pro ball, I started working for UPS, and then I got into the insurance title business and came to a Syracuse game and coach Beheim said what are you doing you need to be coaching he said so I threw myself into being the head coach of a 13 year old AAU team and I got bit and he said I never dreamed ever my first day on this campus as a player I would be the head man in charge of this basketball program and man the pride that he has coaching his alma mater a chance for a big upset right now Davis back from Baker. Well, can't let him get loose, man. That's the one guy you got to shade in that zone. He slides so well into his three-point shots. Starling decides not to attack, and they'll set it up with 2.22 remaining. R.J. Davis with 17 points, 14 here in the second half. If it's anything besides a mince or a Starling drive, I will be shocked. And they go to Brown on the switch. He tries to get rid of the ball instead of going straight up. Syracuse will keep underneath. Well, Mintz had to get rid of it. They're coming to trap the life out of him, and he threw it right where the trap came from. Now a short clock for Cuse to work with. Syracuse is shooting 65% from the floor. Wow. 47% on three. Starling's been a big part of it. Deny Harrison Ingram blocks it. It goes out of bounds. Syracuse ball. And Doug, they can't check it. It's 2.02 on the clock. Just two seconds away from being able to check it, right? But they reset the shot clock, and the ball did not hit the rim. There was, well, maybe there was a change of possession there. But the shot clock at the moment says 20. If there was a change of possession, it should have gone back to 30. And now Jamie Lucky is coming to... The other officials to say, did Ryan possess it? Hubert Davis, meanwhile, from the Carolina bench, trying to explain that there should not have been a shot clock reset. No, Unless, of course, they say Cormac Ryan possessed it. There's no review of who it went off of. It can only be the, the shot clock and where it should be set or reset right now with 2.02 to go in the game. That's possession Carolina, right? And Cormac Ryan, I mean, he firmly has two hands on the ball. Well, certainly in slow motion, it seemed like he had it. Yeah, no, he, he had it. I, I think they're going to get a full 20, a new 20, right? Hubert Davis received the explanation, and that indeed is what it appears to be. 202 remaining in regulation. Syracuse has led most of the game as by as many as 10 in the first half. Adrian Autry looking for his first signature win as head coach at his alma mater. North Carolina only 14 fouls. They can be aggressive right now. Try to get a rip steal. Starling comes to the basketball. Gets double teamed at the mid-court strike. Bell back out to Quadier Copeland. Bell to pull up on the baseline. The ball comes back to him. And a fresh 20 on the shot clock. Brown is fouled by Cormac Ryan. Ryan went down hard. And I'm not sure Brown appreciated the way that foul was delivered. That was a winning cut, possibly, by Malik Brown right there. That is a winning cut. And Cormac Ryan, I, they will probably take a look at this as he comes with really hard contact. And I think all three officials will take a look at this one. This could be a huge call, but the cut by Brown, possibly a winning cut. Man, we talked about him in the open. The scoring of the two guards, but the, the overall play by Brown has been huge in this game. Is that excessive, unnecessary? I mean, that's a definition of an F1. It, it, it's, it could be excessive. He comes down hard on the arms, not on the ball.
So on the official review, Hubert Davis rallies his team together, trying to avoid an upset that would be a quad two loss against Syracuse. Was that a basketball play, a hard foul at the rim? It was going to be viewed as excessive contact coming down that hard, not on the ball, but on the arms. And Ron Gruber, Jamie Lucky, and Tim Plogarty. A big call in this game to be made. You want all three officials to have to good All three officials need to get their eyes on this, Doug. You know, they can view this that Cormac Ryan knows I, I can't give up a layup here so I'm going to you know c commit the intentional foul we don't judge intent but if he's not making a legitimate play on that ball I can see where they would escalate this well Malik Brown is a 72 percent foul shooter he has not been to the line tonight just a common foul, two shots. If they did the right thing, take a look at it. I would have been fine with it going either way. And now Brown with two big free throws. And you want your toughest, most competitive dudes. I do on the free throw stripe at this point. Not so much about the percentage, but how competitive, how tough are you? This kid's 66% in ACC play, but he is tough. This young man spent his youth traveling three plus hours round trip several times a week from Culpeper Virginia to the U-turn sports complex in Richmond just to ball with the best in the area he gets one out of two the Syracuse lead is five we'll get up on those threes right don't dare North Carolina to snap one off Baycott looking only to pass it's Ingram on the right side knocked out of bounds Tar Heels will keep and reset the shot clock. Really alert play, though, by Copeland as that back line defender. Because he was up on the wing initially and then just flew at the ball with low hands and knock it out of bounds. Remember, Syracuse, over the years, last year they played zone 90% of the time, led Division I in the amount of zone possessions. This year, coming into this game tonight, only 13% of the time. But it's been a heavy dose of zone the entire game by Adrian Autry. Look at him fly in and get those low hands. Oh, that's that's going to have to have a second or third look. I love how Copeland comes in with low hands at ball level to get a piece of it. Did that left hand of Ingram make contact after Copeland poked it away? Well, obviously up on the Jumbotron here in the Dome, they have shown the replay you're looking at, and the 20-plus thousand are certain. They are certain. It's Syracuse basketball. <laughs> was it the left pinky that was the last one to touch it? For North Carolina. Well, Ron Groover's call, he had a great view, was definitive. Wow, but he has yeah. overturned it to give it to the Orange. I think it was that when they magnified the look and it looked like it went off that the pinky finger, the Carolina player. That's it. Yeah. Good job by, by us. Well done. Not you and I, but... <laughs> Our tape operators make a big, big possession for Syracuse right now. They cannot turn it over. They got to get a good look. They got to run clock. Carolina gives up the foul in the backcourt. They will send Brown. No, that is team foul number six, non shooting. First on Trimble. Women's college basketball Thursday primetime, a big one coming up. Number one, South Carolina will take on the Lady Balls in Knoxville Thursday, 7 o'clock Eastern, right here on ESPN. South Carolina is rolling, aren't they? Men's and women's basketball. No if, if you're Syracuse right now, Doug, you finish this game off with the intentions of there are no officials. Don't expect the whistle to be blown. Play through the contact. Be strong with the ball. 
Chris Bell yesterday in practice heard from his coach, Red Autry, repeatedly from that exact corner, don't take a bad shot. I guarantee that was running through his head when he turned down that three-point yeah, shot. You, you, you got to keep the ball moving. And now they put Malik Brown back on the line. One out of two the last time he was there. 66% in ACC play. And so now Syracuse is in the bonus. The seventh team foul against Carolina. Syracuse with a chance to get their first top 50 legit win of the year. Oregon kind of fluctuates back and forth right now. Depends on the day. And I'm telling you, I trust toughness at the free throw line in this situation. Toughness wins at the free throw line in close games. That foul was number three on Baycott. Syracuse takes its other four players and moves them off the lane. As Brown finally delivers two. I'm telling you, if I could handpick a guy for Syracuse in this situation, I'm going with number one in white. Pass to Baycott, a little wide. Copeland goes after it, but Carolina will keep it. No change of possession, so the shot clock is 22. And Copeland is convinced that we're going to get another replay review and another overturn in the same spot on the court. Yeah. That's off of Baycott's knee, and that will be Syracuse ball. Well, our tape operators, Jake Chris and Meredith, are going to get an assist if Syracuse hangs on to win this game. A couple of big replay reviews late. One has been overturned. The other one, based on what we see, Jimmy, looks like we're going to have a second. It sure does look like it. It looks like that Copeland, with the effort to try to direct that ball back in bounds, goes off of Baycott's leg. Man, what a massive performance by Syracuse. This thing's not over, but they got thumped in Chapel Hill by 36 points a month ago. And I didn't know if they had the fight and the fire to come out and win this game, but man, they have answered every question coming in about Syracuse basketball so far tonight. And the game's not over. They can't lose their mind. This would be a big call to go in their favor. This would be the 10th turnover committed by Carolina against the ACC's best team at turning you over. Probably just checking the clock now. I think clearly the, the possession is going to be Syracuse. And then when did the ball go out of bounds and exactly how much time is going to be put on this game clock, I think is what they're determining right now. Yeah. All smiles for J.J. Starling in the orange with one minute on the clock. And Doug, because it's in the backcourt, Syracuse will have a full 30 seconds. Again, there are no officials if you're Syracuse in your mind right now. Be extremely strong with the ball. Trying to give up the foul. The whistle comes. Ryan with the personal will send Copeland to the free throw line. Quadier on the season is a 68% free throw shooter. And this will be his first trip to the line. Well, if Carolina loses this game, the fact that three of their 10 turnovers have come in the last 90 seconds will be costly. And think about the soundbite we had with Adrian Autry in the first half talking about after the Wake Forest loss. We did not compete. Everything about us was unacceptable. And he dismissed the player in Benny Williams. And, boy, he will be so proud of his guys, how they fought back in this game. And they were the aggressor from the opening minutes. Ole Miss and Kentucky have gotten underway. You can see that over on ESPN News. We'll get you to Ruck Arena just as soon as we're done here with the Dome. Cormac Ryan. Three from the corner. Timeout, Carolina. Big shot for Cormac Ryan in North Carolina to hang in this game. And now the pressure is going to be on Syracuse again to get the ball in bounds, be strong with it, make free throws. Still not in the double bonus. They'll have to be making a... a regular bonus for Syracuse on the next foul. 
Let's go to Kevin in the studio. Doug, for those who are just joining us, Old Miss Kentucky underway at Rupp Arena right now on ESPN News. Number 22, Kentucky looking to snap a three-game home winning streak, uh, home losing streak, I should say. When we have a final at the Carrier Dome, we will go to Rupp Arena live on ESPN. Back to you. What must be going through the mind of Red Autry? First chance for a signature win as the head coach at his alma mater. Now the lead is down to 5, 49.4 seconds to go. Carolina with a big three from Cormac Ryan to hang in there. The entire focus is how we get the ball inbounds. And Adrian backs his guys up, so it's a foot race to the ball right now. Mintz and Starling have been hard to stay in front of with the ball, or are they hard to stay in front of right now without the ball? Copeland, the trigger man, along the baseline. Mintz gets free, dribbles through the double team in the reach-in. Both Davis and Ingram were on him, and the foul goes against Ingram. And now Mintz, who leads this league in free throw attempts. He's been there just 103 times coming in. Now 110 in ACC play at the free throw line, and he hasn't missed one tonight. Perfect seven out of seven for Judah Mintz. The sophomore out of Gonzaga College High School in Washington, D.C. makes the front end. It's back to a six-point game. Would they storm the court here? Well, if they take down North Carolina? It certainly appears that the students are ready to our left. In and out for Mintz. Well, they need to hold up. But this game's not over. R.J. Davis, again, protects the ball, gets it up on the rim. Ingram tips it in. Timeout again, Carolina. 81-77. We'll step away and be back to the Dome in 30 seconds. At the possession arrow belongs to Syracuse. The Orange is in the bonus and holding on to a four-point lead with the basketball. And Copeland again will inbound along the baseline. He can move, and if you're Syracuse, you have to want the ball right now. All four guys have to want the ball. Good job by Brown to break up, making a violent cut in the press break. I've been trusting his toughness the last two minutes at the free throw line. I'm not backing away from it. Brown is one of four Syracuse players in double figures tonight. And again, the Orange has led for about 32 or 33 minutes so far tonight. Trying to put on the finishing touches from the free throw line. Well, you know those Tar Heels up next to him are chirping in his ear the whole time. That's what they should. That's, yeah. That is a distraction. And they're, they're purposely talking and in the legal way, but just enough sometimes getting ahead of a shooter. Right. Don't foul, press up. Davis gives it up. Ryan has it taken away by Copeland. Here's the hands. foul against Cormac Ryan. How hot has his hands been defensively, Copeland, as he walks by us? I mean, play after play after play in this right corner. He's so good at getting ball level with his paws, just rips it from Ryan. I think we're getting ready to see a good old-fashioned Syracuse court storm. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Foul number four on Cormac Ryan. Copeland gets the second. Still plenty of time for the Tar Heels, down by six. Davis pulls the trigger. No! Malik Brown! Claudia Copeland! Judah Mintz! And instead of putting it up, he allows for Baycott to foul him. And so Mintz, good sportsmanship on both sides, will head to the line. I'm surprised Mintz isn't going to finish this thing off because he's way out front of everybody. He stops right there, and Baycott pulls him down by the jersey. I, I guess they're not going to take a look at that. 
down at this point. Although Jamie Lucky has just blown his whistle. Doug, I think you got to take a look at this. And yeah. Adrian Autry, I'm begging them to go to the monitor. And they will. It's the fourth personal foul on Armando Baycott. Will it be elevated to a flagrant? Well, Armando Baycott is a sweet kid, but you can't you can't pull a guy down from the backside by grabbing his jersey. And that is, to me, the definition of excessive, un unnecessary when you jerk a guy down, grabbing two fistfuls of jersey. And Adrian Autry did a good job continuing to harp on the officials to take a look, take a look, take a look. And it's a six-point game, but you don't think anything for granted right now to the show's triple zeros on the clock if you're Syracuse. Yeah, it is a flagrant one. Yeah, that's... That's a good job by Adrian Autry to fight for that, to fight for that call. A two shots for Mintz, who is eight for nine, and possession for Syracuse. Doug, a potential very damaging loss to North Carolina's chance to be a one seed, and that they can still fight their way back. There's a lot of ball left. For those teams that they're right there with them, the Houston's, the Arizona's, the Tennessee's. But this one's going to sting the Tar Heels, as it should. Mintz gets the roll on number two. He's got 25 to lead all scorers. And now it's orange basketball underneath its own goal. I'm going to video this court storm just to show my grandkids someday. <laughs> I'm glad they're coming from the baseline, hopefully not from center court. And hopefully that's a long, long time from now, by the way, Kennedy Darks. <laughs> Fourth foul on Cadeau. KJ Stalin transferred home to Syracuse for moments like this. And Doug, it's amazing what your first year as a head coach, a win like this does for the entire program, the, mo the momentum, the confidence you gain as a head coach for the first time to take down a top 10 ranked team, North Carolina. So much good comes out of this game for Syracuse and Adrian Autry. Really well done. Davis, the layup, under 10 seconds to go. And Carolina will call off the dogs and allow Syracuse to close out an upset of number seven, North Carolina. And here comes the student section from Syracuse.